he's told me I had a year possibly depending on how this chemo works and how much cancer we can kill. And I had to then form the plan of how I'm going to do it. And then I had to stick to that plan. And if that plan didn't work, I'm dead. All right, welcome back to the Real Quick with Mike Swick podcast. We have had quite the hiatus. I think it's been about two years now, but for good reason. Um, as most of you know, I was diagnosed with uh, stage four leukemia, cancer. I had to uh, step away from the podcast. My neck was really swollen, but that's exactly what the podcast is about today and what we're going to talk about and cover. And I'm going to cover with my man, Tony here, or Tones of Blue, who is one of the best, and I'm not being biased about that, but one of the best uh, master free divers in the world who, who's been diving with me many times. Um, also artist and one of the best, in my opinion, underwater photographers who's done this amazing work up here. As you can see, uh, this was about, what, 10, 5, five, 10 meters underwater going into a cave in Pipi, I think? We were in Kotao, I think. This was that Kotao? Yeah. Okay, that was Kotao. Yeah. And then we got some other good uh, canvases that he's done and we're going to put up here eventually. But uh, yeah, so Tony's been with me through uh, my whole cancer journey from before. No one, f we met when I had cancer and didn't know. Yeah. And then we were free diving all the time and going crazy. Then we slowly found out I had cancer and then I was still free diving. So you've kind of spent this year with me. And so I thought uh, you'd be the best person to come in here and, and talk about um, my journey and what I've been through because you've seen it um, and, and how I've tried to like not let it affect me and, and hold me back and and keep living life and, and giving uh, cancer the savage battle that I did to ultimately beat it and uh, and then get my not only beat it but come back stronger than ever and yeah. feel great and here we are today a year, almost a year after uh, uh, shouldn't be here. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, man. Thanks for that introduction. That's really nice of you. Um, yeah, when I first met you, I met you through Dan Bilzerian. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he likes freediving, and you just kind of just jumped right into it. Um, that's when you didn't know you had cancer. Right. right? You didn't know, but you had this big ass neck, right? And yeah. that's like when I met you, and I just thought, like, dude, this guy's like jacked. You know, he's like <laughs> big as you know but bigger than my legs dude. Yo. skinny legs big <laughs> neck yeah it didn't stop you though right because like you know you were like you were diving fine like in fact the diving that you did like in terms of like regular free diving progression i didn't teach you a course and like you did yeah. 85 meters distance in yeah. the pool uh <laughs> to win to win that contest with dan's dude, cousin, i don't which quit when <laughs> it comes to winning stuff dude i like i will go to the pad completely dude. pass out yeah, you're so competitive, and that's probably why you're still here. Is because like cancer was your competitor, and yeah. you're not gonna let cancer. I had to look at it like a fight. But dude, yeah, I'm actually so yeah. Like, I didn't know. Like, I didn't hear from you for a few weeks, and then I found out that you were in the hospital and you were already treating it. So like, how did you know? I know you had symptoms before you went to the doctor. Like, can you just break it down? When did you start to feel something? When did you go to the doctor? And when did you start your therapy? Yeah, it's weird because like, um, I mean, it's so what happened essentially w was I went to America and I wasn't going to take the shot for the vaccine. I, w I didn't believe in the whole taking the shot, taking medicine that wasn't approved, all this kind of stuff. Um, but I wanted to see my mom who, who's ill as well, uh, see my family, my kids and everything. And so I had to get the shot, had to take it. And so I went to America and I, I took the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, mm -hmm. which was uh, two shots. No, sorry, one shot instead of two shots. So it was the fastest way of getting uh, vaccinated. And um, that was in July of 2021. So like mid-July, mid, mid, July, mid to late July 2021. Like before I met you, right? Was that uh, after, somebody, yeah, after Dan it, came or before? I mean, Dan's been coming forever. But since we started really hitting it up, doing free diving, it was right at the beginning or right before. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Because th that's what caused them to swell up? Yeah. So, so I, I took the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, and I was perfectly what I thought to be healthy. Maybe we were free diving before, but I was, like, training every day. Um, no symptoms, no swelling, no nothing. Everything was perfectly fine. I went to America. Um, I got the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. And within 24 hours, I started getting swelling in my neck. And then it just all of a sudden within I, – I would say, like, within a few days, man, maybe a couple days, maybe – even shorter, my whole neck swole up. I mean, we're talking like Damn. over 20 lymph nodes just swole up completely. And then I was freaking out, like, what's going on? And, and I looked online, and this is the biggest problem was, well, it was good. It was a good thing that it, it, it let me know that I had a, a problem. 
but it was bad in the case that the side effect of Johnson & Johnson was swollen lymph nodes. Right, so it kind of did, like you didn't think it was anything I should have taken so it, it serious. Like a, yeah, I should have yeah. taken it serious and found out I had cancer a lot sooner, mm-hmm. but I didn't because it was a side effect. So I was like, okay, well, cool, no worries. It's just a side effect of uh, Johnson & Johnson. Right. It'll go away. You know, and, and on the internet, it was like six weeks, eight weeks. You know, different people were having different lengths of time to get rid of their 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 swelling of lymph nodes and other issues that I didn't have. You know, and, and I was pretty healthy. Uh, I was very healthy uh, for 40, 43 at the time. Um, so I, I wasn't worried about it. And and then you know, a couple months went by, and then I'm like, man, you know, it's getting worse and worse and worse, and this can't be good. And so then I started going to the doctor and. Uh, they're giving me prednisone now to start kind of like uh, controlling the inflammation. So the inflammation is going down and they're running tests on me because they knew I did the Johnson and Johnson. They think that's part of it. Um, so they were giving me tests for anything immunity related, HIV, hepatitis, all the stuff that's like immunity related diseases and stuff. And yeah. I was passing all the tests and everything. So they didn't know. And they were thinking maybe it could be still just the side effect of the Johnson and Johnson. Um, for whatever reason, they didn't really jump to conclusions on the cancer quite yet. Um, I guess because of some of the testing came back better than what they expected. Um, and then, yeah, they gave me prednisone. I mean, the prednisone was, I mean, had me like amped up like crazy. What, what is it? Prednisone is like an anti-inflammatory. But why does it amp you up? Because I'm, I'm It's like I'm, speed. I don't know. Man. Oh, shit, it's, really? It's like, yeah, like, Damn. like speed without the good, good, no good effects. <laughs> no just, good. just the downsides, yeah. Just anti-inflammatory. Yeah, yeah. it's like just like, yeah, it's just you can't hardly talk, man. You're stuttering. You're like fast-paced. Um, but it was reducing the swelling. Uh-huh. And so in my mind, it was like, you know, I'm not, I'm not thinking about the prednisone working as much as I'm thinking about the, the inflammation's going away. It is a side effect. I'm getting more sold on it being a side effect, and I'm getting back to normal slowly. So again, I still didn't take it serious. So, Damn. I mean, we're talking like yeah. July to December after multiple testing before I was actually diagnosed with cancer. And, and they were trying to, and, and then there was a problem like uh, November-ish, uh, they were trying to take a lymph node out of my neck to test it. And then, you know, that's very invasive. And they were like- Yo, wasn't that, isn't that like, it can have complications, Big right? complications. Right. And yeah, so yeah. the lady that was telling me was a nurse and she was like, uh, you know, she was like, yeah, it happened to me. I was like, what's the, what's the downside? What's the, you know, potential side effects I could face? if you take this thing out and it does some kind of damage to some other parts of the nerves, whatever. She's like, yeah, if it hits a nerve, it, it could drop your face, you God know? Damn, dude, like the old prime minister of Canada, Jean Chrétien, he had uh, half his face was like paralyzed. Yeah, and I didn't want that. I don't <laughs> want a paralyzed face. <laughs> yeah, no, you and don't, And my mom dog. had a stroke and she had to deal with that too. Oh, right? But damn. luckily she's like, she made it and she survived. So that was, this was the least of her problems, right? But I didn't want to have like a, you know, just because I'm getting tested for cancer, which I might not even have, I didn't want to suffer the rest of my life for like a, a you know, a dropped face, you yeah, know? Yeah, no, man. And no. so I was like, I was fighting against that. And they wanted to do a biopsy. And then here in, in Phuket, they couldn't do a good enough biopsy because the, I guess the, the bigger needle. This was all in Phuket. Right. Yeah. Because right. getting all the tests. Because okay. I didn't think I had anything major. And then the, the doctor was like, it was, in, it was weird, but he was insecure to do a, a biopsy with a big needle because he was worried he was going to hit the nerve. Oh. And I'm like, it, it just didn't make any sense. Cause Yo, I'm like, man. You, where's you, your you confidence, ha- man. And you have like also like all these tools to, to see, you know, when the, the needle's going in, if you have to, and make sure you don't hit a nerve. Like, it didn't so make much sense where, to me. Where, like somewhere on the neck or on They here? just chose the biggest one. Like, and oh, it was, it was the, somewhere down here. The, yeah, the vein, the jugular? One. No, it was the, the lymph node. Oh, the lymph node. They, they picked word. the biggest one, and uh-huh. they, they just want to take a big sample of it. So we found a doctor in Bangkok that was like real confident that he could do the big needle and get in there and get enough tissue to actually test it and do a um, histopathology. Histopathology. I don't even know. Yeah, man. Dude, right, I, that's I, like, I think it was a histopathology. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. it something like that. Um, Analysis. But, but it was like a, it was, Analysis. Yeah, it, it was where they basically check. Uh, you know, they 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 look at the. Um, the sample of the tissue with the microscope and they, they definitely, you know, the doctor, you know, identifies that it is actually cancer versus like a machine or versus like a PET scan or versus, uh, you know, some kind of like blood work that could be inaccurate or not a hundred percent. And so the, the results came in. So, so we, we started getting tested in December, uh, serious testing. So we're going to find out for sure. They did everything. Yeah. And they did, they did the biopsy to everything. And then Christmas came, and you know I'm still thinking everything is cool. You know the 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 prednisone's working, and I'm I'm less sw- less swole. 
and so I'm thinking everything's cool and everything, and I'm celebrating Christmas, and then between Christmas and New Year's, December 29th, I had to go back and get my results, and they wanted me to get them fast. And yeah, I was diagnosed. I was diagnosed with four stage leukemia. Damn. Four stage um, lymphoblastic lymphoma leukemia. And Lympho that's tough plastic. to hear. That, it just sounds bad, that right? Sounds, yeah, it, it sounds doesn't even intense, sound like man. yeah. That, they could have left it with yeah. lymphoma. I didn't yeah. need to hear lymph, lymphoplastic, you know. But it sounds like yeah, really so, important. So I remember there's like a, you showed me the video of you getting the diagnosis. Mm. Yeah, there's like a video of you. Yeah, we'll be playing that right now. Yeah, yeah. This is like yeah. Cue it. And, and the, the cancer that he has now, uh, this is have some stage, or you cannot say how. About stage or something. Because it can, tra- can move around, right? Yeah, but if it go outside the if it go outside the lymph node, if mm-hmm. you have lymphoma and it go outside the lymph node, you have stage four. But in your case, you have lymphoma leukemia. If you have leukemia, it means that it's into your bone marrow. What were you thinking at the time? Like because like you and I, we kind of like we're friends, but we definitely approach life differently. And like you're a fighter, right? Yeah. Like, what were you thinking in the first moment that you were like given this diagnosis? Were you just like, all right, fuck this, I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with it, or were you like, oh no? It was a lot to take in at one time. Yeah. And so he already diagnosed me in a matter of moments with like, you know, lymphoblastic lymphoma leukemia. I was good with that for the day. Let's wrap it up, go <laughs> get some sleep, and come back tomorrow and find out some yeah. more details. And then Julia was like, oh, is there stages to like? Uh, this this cancer yes yeah, so, <laughs> i'm so, like oh man this is not going to be good i don't really i'm not really ready to hear the stages yet you know because this isn't probably going to be in my favor uh, cause i know how swollen it was and he looked pretty damn serious and pretty like uh ready to get me in the chemo room you know and of course as the video is showing whether we played it already or not um he's like yeah it's stage four because they had already taken a bone marrow trans- uh, sample right. as well and damn. so um He's yeah. So then I found out everything all at once. So it was like not only did I find that out, but then I found out it was the highest level. Then he wanted to add also that it's the most aggressive form of of lymphoma, like the kind that kills people. So it was a lot to take in in one day. I was <laughs> that lymphoblastic. I was lymphoma. like, thanks, Julia. Yeah, that's crazy. So yeah, your girl, um, like you found out and you she's just concerned like, and everything, yeah. but she's not going. Yeah, you know, she's not in my head. My head's like I'm. I got enough for the day, you know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, you hearing you a doctor are, tell you you got cancer and it's it's, it's leukemia and it's lymphoblastic, whatever the hell that means. That, that you know, the, that's a lot. That's a yeah. lot to take in at one time. And and I was being positive about it because, you know, it, it, the, I was never concerned I was going to die because like his his demeanor at the time uh, looked worried. You know, I mean, there was definitely some concern and and, and there was definitely some like you know you this might be the end. But there was also a fight left. I knew there was a fight, and that's what I do, man. That's what I do is fight. And if there's anybody's going to beat it, I knew I could do it. So the confidence was there, but I just, you know, it was just a lot to take in and 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 contemplate and and prepare for. And and I was look, they were wanting me to stay. So I was like, now I'm thinking like, am I going to get to go home and see my gym, see my you know, family at home and with Julia or something? Or I'm going to be stuck here and and have to just go straight into like an uh, you know a, a room and start doing chemo right away which is what they wanted which is isn't that what you did no 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 so yeah so okay so like to take it I back i left you were you were in the room you got diagnosed yeah. and then you were like okay i'll i'll take this in in stages and your your girl was like i want to know everything right now you found Apparently, out that it yeah, was I did. we didn't super have a, serious. Like, we didn't like have a good talking before i guess we didn't like uh-huh. go over the boundaries of like what to say and what not to say well, and what she obviously, to ask. it's it's just because it's <laughs> so she cares about you like she wanted to figure so she everything went full out, board right? like let's just get yeah. this on all out on yeah. the table which was good you know um and then and then uh i wasn't ready for chemo because i he he essentially said you know i got a, a essentially like a year to live if depending on Damn. how much how much uh you know cancer the chemo kills and so, and how and how your body takes to the chemo. So I didn't think of it that way. I don't. I don't trust everything I hear. You know, I gotta. I gotta be proven things, and and like I'm gonna make my decisions myself. You mm-hmm. know, and, and stick 
stick by what I believe, not just because somebody tells me. I don't trust people for that I just meet because of their credentials or whatever necessarily. You know, I want to make sure I got research and I got, you know, I do, I do my homework and figure out what the best option is for me as an individual and for me as a person. Right. Um, and, and judging that I am a savage and I can put myself through whatever it takes that most people might not can do. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I was... Um, I was more so wanting to try to figure out what I needed to do to, to the, it registered to me like it's not chemo and how it takes to my body. Okay. It's cancer. It's chemo. It's, it's, it's cut and dry, right? It doesn't matter about my body. It comes down to how much chemo is, uh, is going to kill that cancer. And so to me immediately in my head, it's like, I got to fight now. Now and I'm fighting against cancer. I'm fighting against a broken split cell in my body and you thought like right away like he gave you the diagnosis julia your girl she's like asking the doctor more she, she just she just i'm already in my mind because you know i think crazy my brain yeah. works super fast so that's what i want to know so what, i'm breaking what, it down like, already like this lymphoblastic leukemia how i'm gonna fight it and all that and then when she jumped in with the like stage four all that kind of did was stress me to like I, I had to rush now i had to really figure oh, this shit nice. out fast so i'm, I'm already like contemplating in my head while he's talking to me like, oh shit, okay, what should I do? I, you know, I need to go do some research on this and I, what am I gonna do holistically? What am I gonna do medically? What am I gonna do? And then when she got that fourth stage out, then it's like, oh shit, it just put pressure on me. Like, oh fuck, you gotta figure this shit out. You gotta figure it out fast. You know, you gotta, you know, you're not gonna have much time. So, yeah. so then it became like, he's like, we want you to get into chemo right away. And I'm like, you know, I need some time because- uh, How long know, did you take? Two weeks because the thing was, Whoa. yeah, because the thing is, is like, I didn't wanna rush it because I didn't want to just listen to what the doctor said. I wanted to do research on the holistic uh, aspects, um, the medical aspects, and do uh, just, you know, I wanted to break down cancer and how I can defeat cancer. Because if I can make cancer weak and, and I can make it as, 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 as wounded and weak and hurt as possible, that's going to increase my chances of living because chemo is going to kill it faster, easier, and more of it, right? Mm -hmm. So that's that's the key to victory here, in my yeah. opinion, was to make that cancer weak as possible. And I knew that my diet up until that point of diagnosis wasn't so good, and I right. was eating the stuff that I shouldn't have, which, which is sugar and red meat and things like that that cancer yeah. thrives on. So, yeah, so for those that don't know, like, what is the biggest, um, like, food source for cancer? Sugar? Like Sugar is, yeah, like sugar and red meat and fried foods, acidic... You, the acidic diet anything acidic, acidic diet. so yeah. something you that want puts an alkaline your alkaline body right alkaline body yeah so and so like i knew that i wasn't prepared for that and i didn't want to go in there and start chemo and and then have this strong cancer to beat when i can take two weeks on my own and weaken that by just killing myself but like damaging that that cancer as well and starving it mm -hmm. and then coming back ready where this cancer is just like as weak as possible and then blasting it with the chemo then. So I, I started chemo on January uh, 14th, I think. I took two weeks exactly. Word. And I, I starved myself because I was, I was looking you, up- You were fasting right away? I was, I was looking up foods and I was like trying to find, and of course, no sugar, no red meat, and all that was fine. And then I realized that even if I stuck to vegetarian diet and I stuck to eating natural sugars, cancer can eat that as well. And, and, it, and it doesn't mean it's gonna starve completely and it, it's not the weakest I could make the cancer possibly, right? Mm -hmm. And you've seen me push myself to the limits before, obviously, with the free diving. So <laughs> when have I not you, seen you push yourself to so the limits? So you know I'm down for like a good fight and, and kill myself. So like I, I decided that I wasn't going to eat at all. And I was just going to just not eat for two weeks. And and then just... Two weeks? Well, hold on. Yeah. How long did you not actually eat Two for? weeks. You didn't have any no. food for two weeks. No, because I figured that the, my logic was like, if I don't eat for two weeks, for sure cancer is not going to eat. Because I'm not going to give anything, even my good cells food. I'm just, Damn. and so the doctor didn't know this because I knew he was going to be against it. Because I mentioned, I, I, I mentioned something about it, and he's like, "No, you." I was like, "Can I fast?" And like, I've heard holistically that's been a good thing. I've and heard this before too. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, "No, you can't get. You know, this is your first chemo, and you don't want to take a chance of like not being strong enough to deal with the chemo mm. because you're you're making your body weak because you're fasting because you're hurting your good cells. And yes, it'll make the cancer cells weak, but you're gonna, you know, you gotta survive this, this chemo. Right. But I had a big choice to make. Do I wanna live or do I wanna die? And it's like, I felt like I was young and strong enough at that time, and definitely savage enough that like, I, I, can, I, can, I can push myself to the limits. Yeah. And, and I knew as bad as I felt and, it, and, as, and as harsh, it, it was, I couldn't sleep, it was miserable, it was, it, was, it was like just horrible not eating anything right. But I knew if I could do that, the cancer's gonna be suffering even more. For and so, sure. 
it's like the difference of like uh you know when you fall and hurt yourself you injure your arm or something it hurts you know mm -hmm. you're like oh you know you get bumps and bruises it hurts but when you get a good workout you're just ripping your muscles apart and then you wake up the next day and you're sore all over and it's worse than when you fell down you're hurting just as bad but you like that feeling yeah because you know that it's like pain and when it Healthy dries stress. you're going to be a savage you're going to be that much stronger that much rebuilt and it's like going to help you so i felt like all the pain i wanted to be in control of the pain just like when i when i train so I didn't want the pain of the cancer and the pain of the chemo ruling my life and being the worst pain that I felt. I wanted to inflict the worst pain on myself, which is by starving myself to, to be stronger and, and worse for me than the actual chemo, or I'm sorry, the chemo and the cancer, which puts me in control now. Now I'm causing my own pain and suffering um, that's worse than chemo and cancer and thus hurting the cancer a lot more. So I had to just get into savage mode. And, you know, this life isn't free. You know, like sometimes mm. you have to earn your place in life. And, no, sir. Yeah, and, you're and, right. And sometimes you don't get a, a chance. You don't get a choice. Sometimes you have an accident and you die. So, and, and you lose your limbs, you know, and, and, and you lose uh, parts of your body or, or parts of your, uh, your mind. And, and you, you can never recover from that. This fight I can recover from. So, I mean, I had a fight. And so that... That motivated me that at least I had that chance. I had that opportunity. That's and insane. so I was going to push myself to the max and starve myself to the max and wound this cancer as much as I possibly could. Okay. And then, just, so I did two weeks of fasting, went into chemo, and I was at like 200 pounds when I yeah. got diagnosed, something like that, 195, 200. And then two weeks later, I showed up, and I was uh, 151 pounds. Dude. I lost 25 kilos. So what were you doing during that time? Like, you were drinking water <laughs> exclusively, that's I guess? It. I didn't have a single calorie. And then, phew, that's insane. Not and then, calorie, um, yeah. so any nutrition? Did you start no protein, no creatine, nothing? Nothing. I lost 25 kilograms. That's insane. I lost 50 pounds. And, and then I showed up, and the doctor had a heart attack. He was, like, freaking out. He was like, dude. You're not you might not this. can do chemo. We need you to eat protein. I'm like, look, I'm not going to eat protein. I'm like, mm. in my mind, I'm thinking, I don't know what I told him, but I was just like, I mean, have you lost somebody to starvation? If you haven't, then don't talk to me about it. You're a cancer doctor. Stick to that. You know, <laughs> yeah, uh, you're not an expert on starvation. Right. Don't tell me what, you know, I, I, I've done my research and I know I can starve myself and survive. I know it's not healthy. But I'm strong and I can I've survive. Heard, I've heard this from like a, like a nutritionist. I can't think of off the top of my head where I heard it from. But I heard one of the first things to do when you get diagnosed with cancer is to fast. You yeah. Know, that's, what, that's what he recommended. Even before, man. They, they, there's studies out there. You, you can do a seven-day fast, just pure water, and reduce your chance of cancer by 70%. Because what you're doing is it's the same thing as when I do chemo. You're killing all the dead cells and the broken cells in your body, which are cancer cells and potential cancer cells, right? And so when you kill all that off, you're resetting your body, and all that's going to be left when you recover is good cells. You're setting yourself back in time. I, mean, mm -hmm. I looked younger even. I felt better. I, you know, yeah. When I beat cancer, fast-forwarding ahead, I was bigger and stronger than ever yeah. because I had all brand new cells everywhere. There was no mm -hmm. dead cells. There was no hurt cells. Everything Between the chemo and the fasting, everything was gone. But we going back to that, yeah, I, I, I didn't eat for two weeks. And then the first day of chemo, fighting against the doctor because he was just real adamant that I needed to eat protein. I was trying to shove protein in my face. I fasted my first full day in the hospital as well. And so chemo was the first thing that hit me after two weeks. So the only thing that came into my body other than water for two weeks was chemo, just pure poison. Just shh. So I was just like, fuck you, cancer. Like, eat that, you know? And then and I remember it was like that first dose of chemo is tough, man. It's like pure red and just poison. And then... So uh, okay, can you tell me, like, I have not done chemo. I think I've seen chemo on Breaking Bad once. Yeah. <laughs> and so you sit in a chair and they yeah. put some, some... Right into your heart. It, so w wait, hold on. What they they don't put a needle in your arm? Yeah, they put, put it in your bicep and the, a catheter in your bicep in your major vein, the big vein there, right? Yeah, and it goes straight into your like straight into your heart, right from there. Yeah. And how long? Because like you and how long does a normal person do chemo for? And then how long did you do chemo for? Well, well I mean, I told him I was in it to win it. You know, like I'm, I wanted the strongest dose and, and let, let's push me to the max because I'd already starved myself. I, was, I already got to the point where <laughs> I felt like I was Mike dead. Swick move. But it was like I felt good <laughs> about it, you know, because I, I like the more pain and suffering I had, the more in control I felt. Because right. it's me causing this. You're not beating me cancer. You're not causing this pain. The chemo is not causing this pain. I'm causing this pain. Yeah. I'm, I'm in control right now. And all this pain is going to be hurting the weakest part of my body first 
before it hurts the strongest part. And the weakest mm. part is cancer. So that's what I kept going on was the fact that like, I'm just fucking cancer up. And, yes. and so yeah. I, it was, it was kind of like, it was kind of a, uh, you know, it was like that, that your weightlifting feel, you know, it was, it, it was that, 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 p- that kind of pain where it was, it was bad. And it was, and, and it, you know, I had to be savage because I mean, it was, it was tough, man. You want to stop and eat so many times and like, you know, it's, it's, it's a brutal way to do it. And I'm not, I'm not, I want to say that I'm not giving like advice to anybody to do this. And yeah, I'm not a doctor or anything like that. This is just what works for me. So, but, so specifically then, like when you say you want the max dose, you want to hit it hard. Yeah. How many days do you do it for? How does it work? How does chemo work? And uh, what did they recommend? And what did you tell them to do? Well, the first, the, you, you start out with a month straight. Um, of what? Like chemo. how many hours a day? You do every other day. And what do you do? It's all day? Eight hours a day, yeah. Eight hours a day? Eight hours a day, pure chemo going in your body. Whoa. Yeah. And when do you start to feel crappy, like right away? As soon I was feeling crappy before I got in the hospital from just starving. And right. The chemo didn't <laughs> help, you know, th- that first day of poison going in. And what does that feel like? I mean, because now you're, you're, you're starting to, you know, kill all not kill but damage all your cells so now you're you know and your cancer cells are dying but the one thing i looked forward to is going to the bathroom dude because when i was like pissing in the toilet i was just like imagining just cancer just flowing down into the toilet that was dead so is that what happens it gets i I assume the only way you lose it is by pissing right because that's all i was doing so it filters out i I was just like every time i went to the bathroom it was just just, in my sick mind i was just like yeah sign our bitches you know like get out of here it's nice like yeah like I don't know whether or not that's how you get, like, how it works, but it has to get out of your body somehow. Yeah, so and I assume. I, I, mean, I assume that's, that's the way. Because I mean, what, how I assume the first time was because when I went, it was just beet red, my urine. Damn. I yeah. get. I eat beets, and I guess that's where the beet red, red yeah. comes from. Yeah, it's American. But, thing. yeah, when you piss after you eat beets, it was red. Yeah, red. but a lot of it was a chemo, but was, to me it was like, you know. Is, is the, the chemo smell, liquid, is the the, chemo liquid yeah, clear? Yeah. yeah. Or is no, it no, red? No, no, it was a little red the first one. Oh. The first dose they hit you with, and then they finished the seven hours of that day. So the there's lunes, like, there's like, like a different chemo. liquids yeah, and shit? Yeah, yeah. They hit you hard first. But it wasn't just that it was red and that it was potent and it was strong. But it was also that it was um, the smell, and, and you could tell that it was part of your body going out of you. It was it was a strong smell. Like what? Like like organically gross? It was like a strong <laughs> like smell what? of like body, not 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 just chemical. So like I could tell there was parts of my body going oh out of my uh, out of my urine, and I loved that because I thought it was cancer and all the, the toxins and all the everything bad. So I went. I fasted through my first day of chemo and then the next day i started vegetarian diet only no pro no no salmon which later i I adapted onto um ocean ocean salmon and organic chicken but at this stage through my whole first month i did uh, but for the first week i did i fasted the first day of chemo then i ate pure vegetarian like just all vegetables just all cancer killing cancer yeah uh, foods that cancer doesn't eat Mm. that they say you know and everything that cancer doesn't like i just ate that whole day while doing uh you know having my my recovery and then the next chemo day again fasted all day again boom chemo again and then i did vegetarian then chemo again then vegetarian then chemo again for the first week by day number eight every now mind you when i got to the hospital um they wanted to do a pet scan test so I was on inf- anti-inflammatory pet prednisone up until I got to the hospital. And now I'm 150 pounds. I'm weak. I'm like miserable. And I'm getting off the prednisone because they want the swelling to come back naturally. They want to see how big it is. Right. And they want to test it. And mm-hmm. they want to see, you know, but the prednisone's covering it up because it's making the swelling go down. They want it to come back. And they want to see how big it is. So now my neck's getting bigger than it's ever gotten and I'm 150 pounds, and I'm starving, and and now all of a sudden my neck is in just pain. I can't move my neck. I can't like sleep. I can't like all of my neck is like just swollen like straight. It was just huge. You can see in some of the videos I have from from the hospital, and so yeah, that was brutal. And so uh, within eight days um, from that point, um, I had no swelling. Really? None. So eight days of chemo, first treatment, yeah. already down. From the fasting and the chemo and the yeah. vegetarian diet, I, from eight days in, I had not a single symptom of cancer. And, and did I the doctor... I had no fever. I had no... My vitals were absolutely perfect, especially for a 43-year-old. Um, no swelling, no nice... Absolutely no symptoms of cancer whatsoever. And they, awesome. the doctor then now is bringing other doctors in to look at me, and they're just like in shock of like how quick... 
the results were the same doctors that were wheeling in scales trying to make me weigh myself and like monitoring my weight and telling me I'm doing everything wrong by starving myself. I'm not going to survive this chemo and like this is going to kill me and everything. Not kill me, but like this is going to be a brutal chemo session. You're not going to be recovered. You're not going to be on this plan that we have you on because you're not going to handle the chemo because you're, 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 you've lost 25 kilograms. That's crazy. And, dude. and 50 pounds in two weeks. I mean, so do so everyone does like a month on their first go right so that was quite normal did you have a higher dose or was i i, I told him to go hard because i wanted i wanted to kill this i mean my life depended yeah, on it and i, I wanted sure. him to understand that I'm, I'm a little as you know i'm a little different and like i can take it I, I'm, I'm willing to i'm willing to starve myself almost to death that's if, right if it takes that to get my life back you that's, know what i'm saying like i'm not afraid of, of like pushing myself to the fucking limits of death to come back and live because I knew that when I came back and if I beat this this cancer, I'm gonna be like this. I'm gonna have my arms and my strength and my training. I'm not gonna have any negative side effects left over. So yeah. this was a battle I had to fucking win to come back and finish what I need to do in this life. Yeah, dog. And so I went hard and, uh, and, and, and here's the thing, I went so hard, I felt so good and he felt so relieved and I felt such good energy at the end of my first one month, I was supposed to have only uh, one month uh, or three weeks off after and then start chemo again and mm -hmm. then you do one week a month so you do one week of hard chemo and it takes three weeks to recover right and usually you're in bed you're taking off work yeah i'd never miss a day at work of course no uh, i'm free diving out <laughs> after chemo <laughs> dude yeah. you're free diving so, like, what? so like after the first month like uh i felt so good i had no symptoms i said fuck man i'm not gonna go back <laughs> dude, i'm sorry for laughing so like, like i didn't i didn't go back thing. till i didn't go back until uh, four months later dude that is crazy and i was supposed to go back every month and so what did they say so like okay they kept you, calling me to come back how long did you um okay the first but chemo i had no finished. reason to come back and i thought maybe holistically i beat it w mixed with the with the chemo because like i felt great and it's like why am i going to because the chemo i know fucks you up it, it, it hurts course, you and yeah. it causes bad effects i didn't want to do it if i didn't have to yeah and how, so, how long was your recovery so after, after the first the month? first month I was at home for like a couple of days, and then we went free diving, and then that's when I <laughs> fell off the boat. Oh, when you fell off the boat, yeah, because when that Dan time. Dan came back, Dan right? Came, Dan, was, yeah. when I found out, yeah, yeah, that was for that was sure. February. That because was February Dan, when I announced I had uh, cancer. Because my my quote was like, I was like, uh, I had to get in this mindset, man. You got to get in this mindset that you're gonna win, you're gonna live, and you're gonna fight it. It's easy to say that you, you were hardcore from the beginning when you beat it already. But like when I got diagnosed, my my you can look at all the, the Internet right now and see back in the day when, when I made all these quotes uh, in the beginning when I announced publicly I had cancer. But my quote was on Twitter. It's still there. Um, and then on a lot of these articles was like, I'm going to go public. And I think it was like sometimes, you know, you get hit with the lemon and sometimes the whole lemon tree falls on your head. And I got hit with the cancer punch. Um, but I'm decided. I decided to go public because I want you all to see me beat this cancer's bullshit ass. And and the thing is, is I wanted people to know that's not my mentality. You know, I was looking at four stage leukemia and a deathbed, but I wanted people to know that I I didn't see it that way at all, and I wasn't going to live that way. And I wanted people to follow me, knowing I had cancer, and watch me free diving with you, and watch me going out and training, and watch yeah. me doing everything, and seeing that it didn't affect my life, and I was going to continue to to live my life fine and fight this throughout this whole thing yeah you were expanding your business you were traveling yeah. you were training yeah, everything it's, the same i did a film i did a whole film <laughs> you did a out. film as well yeah and I had, it's I, actually I had, I had uh i had uh, um the nfts as well dude yeah i did, I did like, all kinds of projects but i also did um um i had a real bad cold and it turned into pneumonia uh, after when i was doing the film because the film dude. that's coming out is called kiss of the con queen and it's I had to be in this film because it was about my life. It, it, it's a true crime drama. And it's a major film. Yeah, I saw the trailer, dude. Looks it's a major, sick. major film, right? And But it's about my life in Indonesia. And I was caught up in one of the biggest crime, uh, big, biggest cr crimes that ever happened in Hollywood history. And, and, and it affected like 500 victims, right? That's and I was so caught insane. up. And I was one of the biggest guys caught up in this in Indonesia for like three months. And I got kidnapped. And it was, it was crazy. And I had to find my way back out of there. It's in the movie and everything. Nobody knows about this. Cause I didn't tell anybody about this, and so I had to be in this film because they wanted this film to be uh, with the victims of the of the situation as well. Right. And I had auditioned and I passed, and I was getting fourteen scenes written in this film, and it was like I was. It was amazing for me to get all this. You know, you this is my dream to be in a film and have all this. But I was in the hospital, and, and I just finished chemo, and I had to go straight into to start filming this film, and 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 then I got sick, so um, I put on antibiotics, and then. 
um, the antibiotics weren't working. And so I, I had to go back to the hospital. I had to stay in the hospital for three days on a drip, like an, an uh, uh, antibiotic drip. And that was like the, the strongest antibiotics for the they leukemia. had. For the leukemia. For the, the what's it called? Leuke- pneumonia. Pneumonia, because sorry, pneumonia not leukemia. Was, because pneumonia, I had no immune yeah. system because of the acute le- leukemia, I'm sorry, because of the chemo. I had no immune system to fight the pneumonia. And so then they had to put me on this antibiotic drip. And then I was trying to get out of the hospital Dang. to make, to make my, my shoot day. And I got out and left the next day, flew to, to do my film, and I shot for two weeks. And this was this was before your second chemo treatment. That was four months after your this first was, one. This right? was uh, into it a little bit more. I had one okay. more between then. But but going from the first chemo treatment, I did the first month, and then Dan was in town because Dan was like, yeah, "I'll be there soon." When I announced that I had ca- cancer and everything, yeah. So he came in, and then we started free dive. And so as soon as I got out of chemo for that first month. I think I took a couple of days off. Uh, I was doing work from home, and I came into the gym a little bit. And uh, you can see a couple of the posts on Instagram. I looked real skinny, super skinny. Um, you and were really free, lean, and a lot, of, a lot of people liked that you were lean, and you're like, no, I want to be bigger. And yeah, like, yeah. Y- yeah. They, didn't, they didn't understand. And, and then we did free diving, and that was that day that, like, uh, we got back to Supanwa, and I jumped off the boat, and my legs just couldn't catch me because they were so weak, and I fell down on the, the, the beach. <laughs> it was and, kind of and funny. And then, then, then we had to climb up that the whole staircase like to the top of Supanwa. But, yeah, then I did free dove all the way for, for three, four months straight, just, just free diving, date, uh, training. And what made you go back? It was just like you had to do a the swelling came back. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. So it wasn't all the way beaten, which I I, I knew that was a chance. Yeah, but I'd already sure. seen it like the worst, and I had smashed it. So I was like, if it if it comes starts swelling again, I'll go back. And how but I, did, I didn't want to get that chemo unless I had to. And and for those of you listening, when you when you do figure out which way you're going to do this holistically or medically, and you start getting results, stick with it so that you can beat it. Because what's yeah. going to happen is you're going to beat it, and you're going to feel great. Uh, or you're going to c- come close to beating it because they didn't announce me beating cancer after the first month at all. I just am going by how I feel and the, and the vitals and, and my, and my um, symptoms. But um, I, I felt good and I didn't want to do the chemo and that was a bad decision because had I went back and done the chemo, I could have beat this thing in six months so, or, yeah, or the, sooner. And it, then it took a year to beat it, which, which is still crazy for four stages of chemo. Super insane. So right now we, we don't see cancer. Yeah. Okay. Right now we don't see cancer. Go to all the chemos, but just just make sure that you're you're. In my opinion, at least, I'm not giving you medical advice, but the fasting will make it so much better. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is I'm, I'm I'm a testament to it. Like this it, is it, it, you're fasting now as well. Like I now just that fasted a 72 hour fast like a few days ago. Damn, I'm mm-hmm. going to join you on the next one. I've never fasted yeah. in my life, but I keep hearing about the benefits. I, I don't fast think every single month. Really? And I don't eat sugar still. I don't eat red meat. I don't you eat pork. You don't eat steak anymore? No. Damn. So it's just it's just salmon and chicken? Yeah, and it's not and I don't even have cancer, but it's just like my life is it's just I'm way more healthy, way more I uh, feel so much better. Yeah. So. so for those listening, you know that uh maybe don't have as much of a fighter mentality as you do, like what advice do you have coming from a person who's beat it like Clearly, your perspective is that I'm going to hit this as hard as possible. And do you recommend for everyone to, um, let's say, like, would you say it's best not to accept that the cancer is going to potentially kill you and just to always see it as like, I'm going to defeat this? Yes. Yeah. Every fight. Yeah. This is the the, the biggest thing I want to bring up because um, I didn't realize how people treated. Like, I know me, right? So when, when cancer hit me, it's just, I just react. I didn't think about other people and how they did it and all this other stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Obviously, when you get hit with, with, with the, the four-stage leukemia from the doctor, it ain't a good feeling, you know? And, yeah, you might, I thought this could be the end, sure. You, 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 it doesn't, it, like, you're, you not, you're not giving up and you're not saying you're going to lose, but you know that now you have a potential of, of getting killed by this thing it, no matter what happens it's could i had the most aggressive form of, of lymphoma possible and then rumble johnson who's a you know rest in peace who's a uh, mma fighter who trained with me and was a big time ufc superstar died of the same thing that i had so you know it's it, it, the, the the potential of death was there and yeah. i knew i had to fight my best fight to win this thing um but you can't think about that you got to think about you're going to win and 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 what I knew I had was what you've seen with, with our competitions and stuff. I knew I could push myself to a limit that most people can't because I can outweigh the good versus the bad and know that like I, I, can, I can punish myself harder than almost anything 
can punish me yeah. if I have to. If, yeah. the, if, 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 it's, if it's what needs to happen and I can do it. But the problem is I was learning is, is I got started getting after I announced the cancer and I started doing uh, good and beating it. And then when it definitely after I beat it, I started getting all these messages, ton, thousands of messages which is why we're doing this podcast. Um, and the mentality is the problem. This is, this right. is what's wrong with people um, and why they're having a hard time is they're not understanding that sometimes you got to fight for this life and sometimes life isn't free and sometimes mm -hmm. you have to be savage and you have to fucking do something that's not going to be fun it's not going to be easy and it's and it's it's not going to it's not going to be you know what you want but you're going to have to do it if you want to live and yeah. and the alternative is you're going to die and you don't want to die right right so no. i have these people messaging me and they're just like I got this tumor and it's cancerous and you know what did you do to 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 beat cancer so fast because they want me to do chemo and I don't want to do chemo. And I'm just like, do you want to live? <laughs> I mean, yeah. like, you, you don't want to do chemo. Chemo is the least thing of the problems that I had. I mean, I, I, the stuff that I did to myself was 10 times worse than the chemo. I mean, right. I starved myself, and, and that was way worse than, than the chemo. And then when I hit the chemo, it was hitting a starved, weak, you know, me. It was, then it was even t worse than normal. Um, and then uh, the vegetarian diet sucked because it wasn't replenishing me as much as – eating tons of protein and you know steaks and all this kind of stuff mm. of course it's not ultimately good for me but it's also protein which builds your muscles and builds some of your cells back um so yeah it's just you just need to get in that that mindset when you do get diagnosed with cancer in my opinion that you're going to have a fight and you need to fight it the best you can and it, what works for me was fasting and 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 using the mentality of, of you're fighting cancer. How can I, how can, cause see, I didn't have this luxury when I fought, right? I, I couldn't fight you and an, as my opponent in the UFC and wound you and hurt you and make you injured and make you sick and then come out and fight you and then have an easy fight. I had, I didn't have that ability to do that. I had to fight you at your best. Right. At least I had to assume, right? With, with cancer, I could actually affect my opponent. I could, right, I could affect. Right. I see what you I mean. could affect who I fight. So like this to me was like an advantage, and so even though it was painful for me, and even though it hurt, and even though it was kind of, um, you know, not not the most comfortable way of doing it, um, I I could affect that cancer and wound it and starve it and beat it up and get it to where it's weak as hell, so that when that chemo comes in, it's just going to trash it out, and that's exactly what it did. I mean, I killed a ton of cancer. Amazing. So yeah, like, so for like, you have a background, your life, you, you had a difficult upbringing, you know, you, you know, everyone does, you know, everyone like, does. I hate but being pity me on that stuff. But like, no, but but I'm just trying to like, for me, a it's, great it's upbringing. Really my mom was fantastic. But yeah, I lost my dad. And I had I, I, yeah, right. I grew up I grew up poor. You know, and, yeah, you grew and, up and poor and I Texas. everything I had, you know, like I'd never been given anything. I remember you saying like, when you were like, just like a bouncer and stuff like yeah. that. But then you learn to fight and you that mentality of fighting, do you think like a person who is healthy that's listening to this that, you know, might be curious if they were to ever get cancer? Do you feel like just having that kind of uh, outlook on life and anything that you do would carry over to being able to be good at fighting cancer? Like if you're used to discomfort, you're used to stress, you're used to pain in whatever form, you know, whether it's from training, exercise or like ice baths or like cardio, do you think that can carry over to help with fighting if you're used to the discomfort and the pain, knowing that there is a delayed benefit I'm going to push myself. I mean, you've seen me. I'm going to push myself harder than, than most people, but I could have pushed myself less and got the same results. I mean, I beat it fast. I, I could have done a whole lot less than I did and, and maybe just beat it a little longer, you know, or whatever the case. So the biggest point I want to make in, the, in this entire podcast is don't judge it off of me and my, my, who I am and, and, and what I had to do. Understand that everybody has savagery inside them, right? This is Jim, a.k.a. Tylen, who's right outside the doors here at the studio, um, has proven that just like fight club the movie right everybody has that savagery inside of them and mm. people come here every day that are business people that are construction workers that are influencers that are you know and they're they're out there beating each other up in the in the, in the the ring with you know obviously with gloves and stuff like that but they're savage right you have the savage in you and what we've created here at ak thailand is an atmosphere for anyone to come and let that savagery out in a fun environment in a fun way and in a, in a cool way and in a, in a 
heroic way where you can take photos and videos and then show your friends and family and be like, I'm a badass. You know, I'm not just a dust jockey like you think, mama. I'm like a bad <laughs> motherfucker, you know? Yeah. I'm in Thailand training in Muay Thai. Right. I got it in me, you know? But sometimes you have to bring that out and and medically or, or, or just to earn your place and, and fight these battles like cancer or whatever. It's there. So understand, you know, uh, whoever you are and wherever you are, um, no matter how weak you think you might be or, or, or as far away from being a fighter per se or whatever as you think you are, you have it. You, you have the ability to do it. You, right? you can yeah. wake it up, man. This is how a, this is how a pregnant woman lifts a car to save her child. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's in there. It's in there. Trust me. So this isn't about me and like what I did and like how I can. You have to be like me to win and, and beat cancer. Everybody has that savagery, but you have to get that mindset from the right. beginning. And when you get the mindset, how you feel, how you think, and how you speak and project is how you're going to act. And you can't go in there scared. You can't go in there. I mean, when you first get told, you're going to be shaken up. But when you start the battle, when the fight starts and you start planning your game plan, like I had to make a decision, you know, like the, starving myself for two weeks was a fucking dis crazy decision. Yeah. That dude. could have killed me. How right? does that feel? Like, is but it? I'm saying I had to stick to that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I, you can't change your mind when you, when you do this. So, mm -hmm. like, he's told me I had a year, possibly, depending on how this chemo works and how much cancer we can kill. And I had to then form the plan of how I'm going to do it. And then I had to stick to that plan. And if that plan didn't work, I'm dead. So, to me, like, that was a, it was a huge risk to, to put myself in a state where, this chemo is going to really fuck my body up because it's going to be mm. extremely weak. So it, but I just knew that cancer was going to be weaker, and that's the decision I made, and I went full full throttle for so, that. So you decided, like, it, it does sound like, you know, you are a big believer in the fasting being a huge 100%. catalyst for helping you overcome this. How, like, what, if I were to do a two-week fast, like, what do, what, like, do you find that it gets easier after a few days or harder? Like, I've heard some people say after three days, like, the hunger goes away and your body kind of understands what's going on. But you were also dealing with cancer at the same time and taking mm. prednisone. Mm -hmm. So how did that feel? Like, how did it, do you recall? And I was in a foreign hospital and I didn't have my, my kids and my mom, my family. Yeah. And it, yeah. I, it, there was, it was a, it was like, <laughs> it was it, a crazy the only person that was man. with you was Julia, Julia right? Yeah. yeah. So you and just, then she got support. And then, the, the, and then the, my first month of chemo, She's in the room with me. Now, mind you, if I, during me being starving, dealing with chemo, not eating, and mm -hmm. having cancer, if I get COVID, I'm dead. Yeah, your immune system If I get a cold, I'm dead, right? right? Yeah, yeah, damn. And, and, and Julia got COVID in the hotel room because she was flying back and forth from Phuket to, to see me to bring more stuff, take things back. And, and, and she was only doing it a couple times. She flew back the last time she got COVID. She had, and, and so she was in my hospital room sick as can be. And I was in the I was in the, uh, the big bed like the R bed, and she was in the hospital bed, and, and they were treating her, and found out she had COVID and sent her home. Damn! And you, like, I never got. It. I was okay. just super lucky. But dude, that, that that was all the first month. So this first month of, of, of cancer for me was just, it was just so much to deal with, right? It was like, yeah, it was tough. But um, yeah. So going back to what you were saying. Um, Does it get easier if somebody yeah, yeah. wants to fast, yeah, like, and do I it? I don't suggest fasting to, for two weeks, man, unless you're dealing with some <laughs> okay. major shit, dude. Yeah. So, but if you have cancer, like, <laughs> give it a go. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'd say I'd say fast as much as you can, and do research. Don't don't take my word for it. I mean, I, I beat mm. I beat it, and I'm a testament to what I did. Yeah. Um, but but I, don't take my word for it because I am young, and I'm not young. I'm forty. I'm forty four. So I'm, I'm not young. You look I'm, young. I'm fairly sure. young for cancer. Hell yeah. I'm strong. You see me train. We free dive mm. all the time. So I do have an advantage. So if you're 60 or something like that, you're not going to be in the same position as me or, you know what I'm saying? So, so it's like, I, do your research and see what's best for you. But at the same time, uh, a 72 hour fast, even a 24 hour fast, 12 hours is, is fine. Mm -hmm. 24 hours is good. 48 hours is good. 72 hours is great. That's the max I think you should do. And you'll feel completely different, man. You, you, you'll notice like you're, You'll taste better. You'll smell better. Your, your eyes, everything is just better. It just seems to be better after a good fast. Um, <clears throat> I feel like you, you look a little bit younger. You look, you know, you're more healthy overall. But what happens is when you start eating as a, a kid, and this is all stuff that I've, I've read, so I mean, I might be wrong about some of the stuff, but when, when you're, you know, when, from the time you're born, you're digesting food in your stomach. So your stomach is constantly digesting food for, say, 43 years. And so I got cancer or whatever, right? Um, 
and so it doesn't do anything but digest food. But the act, it, it, it's, its act after digesting food is to cleanse the body mm-hmm. and to start fighting off, the, getting rid of your toxins and fighting off the dead cells and getting, getting your body into a better state because I guess it's preparing for you not to have food and it wants to make you the healthiest as possible to cope for this till you can eat again because it doesn't know your body, right? Yeah. So that's what the whole point of fasting is. So when you stop eating then you're not digesting anymore. So for the first time in your life, probably, unless you fasted before, now your body doesn't have anything to digest. So now it has to do something else. So then it starts cleansing and Mm -hmm. it starts cleansing. This is what the real fasting is about. And this is where the the real benefit comes in. It starts taking away uh, all the bad things in your body and, and, and just rejuvenating your whole body. And so when you know, you run out of, when you stop digesting after your first like 12 hours, from that point on, as long as you can do it and handle it, you're just making yourself better. You're not going to hurt yourself. Uh, you know, you, you can go a long time without eating. I mean, up to like a month, I think, or something like that. Um, You've done a month without eating? No, 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 no. I'm saying you can go a, a month. Oh, right. Yeah, I I've think, heard of, I think I've heard you know, that. like, yeah, it, yeah. Or, or at least with little food. But you got to drink a lot of water, obviously. Yeah. Um, but, but it makes you better. You, but but the, I will say, two weeks and longer, you're going to start losing a lot of your weight too. So, and yeah. you don't want to do that. You lost a quarter of for your fighting body for weight. my life. I'll do it. But I don't want. I didn't want to be uh. 151. I wasn't 151 pounds in school. I didn't want to be 151 Damn. pounds at 43 years old. You uh, know. How much are you now? I'm like 195, 200. But okay. but it's yeah. only because I'm I'm thinning myself up and 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 doing high reps and getting myself low body fat. Whereas when I beat cancer, I was like 220. Yeah, immediately. I remember. Biggest yeah. I've ever been. It was just strong. up. But it yeah. was just big. It was fatty weight because it was a lot of vegetarian diet. So, mm-hmm. so, so yeah, I mean, I, I would say do a 72-hour fast. You'll, f- you'll be amazing. You'll, okay. f- you'll feel amazing. And it, it's, it's so good for everything just to, to cleanse your body out. Uh, you have so much toxins that your body holds. Uh, a lot of your food stays in your body, stays in your stomach, and just sits there. Um, you know, th- there's a lot of things that happen when you never fast. I think it's a, it's a huge and do research on it you'll find out i mean there's there's a lot of guys it's not just about you know this research that may have happened at this university or this you know a medical facility or whatever this is like real people like telling their stories mm-hmm. and what their results are and i'm telling you this is why i did it everyone that i saw that was a legit human being you know that did a good fast had incredible results i've seen people beat cancer without even doing chemo no and, and way, really? Yeah, I've read, I've read all there and seen their, their documentaries about this where they've, they've beaten the cancer and, or, they've, or they've fasted and they've went through cancer and beat it in the first session, that first month. Whoa. Like I thought, that's the reason I stopped, by the way. Because of the documentary I saw, this guy, he beat, he beat cancer uh, in the first month of his chemo because of his fasting and his diet and everything. So that's kind of why at the end of that first month, the doctors, you know, were telling me to come back and do this and do that. But I was like, I want to be, you know, I want a reason to because chemo is, I mean, I'm not trying to, I'm, I'm a mix between everything, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not an advocate for like chemo because I, I mean, you need it. It does poison and kill the cancer and, and it, it works perfectly well in my opinion with your fasting, but it damages the shit out of your body Word. And, yeah. and it's hard to recover. You, and here's the steps, like the first the first week, you're going to be just de- destroyed. It's going to just destroy your body and, and kill your, um, you know, your cells. And so how are you feeling every day? Like super, do you feel physical pain, weak, like yeah, pain in your joints? Or? If you already kind of have problems and yeah, because yeah. all your cells are weak. Then you go into to week number two. So now you're home because af- after the first month, right? You do your weeks and one week and then three weeks off, one week, three weeks off. Yeah. So your second week, you're at home and then you start... F- Think things happen throughout the whole next three weeks from that first week, even though you're not in the hospital. So the second week you start like you're getting your your strength back, and and I'm free diving, of course, and doing everything else. But then you've probably seen me slurring and stuff. Then I start slurring. Mm-hmm. So in between that second and third week, your brain gets hit, and you get what's called chemo brain. Then you start slurring when you're talking. Damn. And so they could last up to months. I and mean, that's what freaked me out the most, why I don't want to do the cancer the most, because people are going to think I'm like punch drunk and stuff like that, right? I'm having meetings and talking to people, and they think I'm like drunk or something, you know? Because <laughs> I'm like slurring, but it's just the chemo brain. It's affecting your brain at this stage. And this is two to three weeks after. Then the, then the last week, or going into the last week, your hair stops growing. So I never lost hair except the first month. 
but after those the, the the weeks of chemo and then the three weeks off that third week when you're you're already about ready to go back to get chemo again your hair just stops growing which is kind of cool because you shave your head and you shave yeah your you face, shave your head and yeah. you're good for like a week you ain't got to <laughs> shave again so, so that's that's the one good side yeah. for me at least it, 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 it wasn't enough to take the hair off but it was it was definitely enough to stop it but yeah wow and then okay so then you started the second session so you since you took a four month break rather than doing it like you were supposed to yeah yeah <laughs> um did you well, I mean, uh, they say supposed to i mean it depends if i had beaten it or not but i just i i'm juggling all the stuff in my head right gotcha. now and i knew what yeah. i beat before and, yeah. and it was nothing left so, so i didn't have anything to fight in my opinion okay so then your second session was a week and you just started the mm -hmm. week one week on three weeks off how many more sessions did you do? Because that was beginning of last year, beginning of 2022. I, I think I've done, because I went to a different place. I didn't like that. Um, and then I went, and, and then I waited another two months or something because I was fine again. So how? And oh. then it came back again a little bit. So then I was like, okay. And then I went to the, back to the original place and got the best doctor possible. And he's a real good uh, medicine mixer. He could really mix the chemo really well and do a good job. And we had a good long conversation. I'm like, I want to get this thing beat. And he's like, well, you need to like come <laughs> to chemo Regularly. and we'll beat it. Yeah. And he goes, and just because you have no symptoms and because and it's a lesson to you guys, just because you have no symptoms and you think it's beat and you think it's gone and you don't have any swelling and all this, you still need to do it. And I had to do two more chemo sessions after they declared me cancer free just to make sure and just to kill any potential because the PET scan just shows like, you know, it's like a dyed, um, you know, like radioactive. Right. Chemical. Yeah. They die. Yeah, yeah, and, so. and, and they just see where it goes. So there's multiple things that could cause it to go to certain areas. So they don't know for sure. So when they, they declare that you've you've beaten cancer, they want to put you through more chemo and definitely do it. And I did it. Yeah, um, I mean, I think I that's good. I did 42 good. more hours of chemo uh, after cancer, which sucked, but just to make sure all the broken cells, all the potential cancer cells that were going to form were dead and killed. And it can come back, and I mean, who knows? It could come back and be aggressive and kill me. Who knows what can happen from the future? But I, I will fight to my dying day and, and give it everything I have. And, and, and as far as I'm concerned, I, I don't think I'll ever die of cancer. I think I might die of starvation. <laughs> and, and I might die of the fight, but but I'm not going to uh, – I've made my mind up that I'm not going to let cancer beat me. I've beat it already. I know how to beat it. I beat it when I was unprepared and I was rushed and I was having to scramble to, to figure out how, what I needed to do and break it down and, and look at it from as logical of a standpoint as possible. But right now I'm fucking ready. You know, now I'm like I, I'm ready. Bring, bring it the fuck on. So if it comes back again at a, for a second turn – I'm going to I'm going to smash it. That's dope. And um do you like a a bit of a question on the topic of like you had just Julia supporting you at the time. Mm. What would you recommend to people that may not have cancer but like, somebody in their life has cancer mm -hmm. like a friend of theirs or a family member? What do you think like is something what's some advice for them mm. to like you know help the person support out? Support that person as much as possible. Y y you know like this is the problem with me compared to, to I don't sit and mope around and I'm like a pity me type person, right? I, I've always went through a lot of hardships, you know, and fighting and, 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 and I, I don't really, I don't really see pain and, and suffering and, and pushing myself as the same as other people do kind of that live in kind of, especially in America, you kind of live in a bubble there a little yeah. bit and you're not really prepared for the world till you go out and see like what we've seen and, and, and done what we've done. Um, but understand even though I don't show that it hurts and that it's a painful and that it's stressful, the biggest thing for me was the stress of it being on, over my head at all times to have cancer. And, you know, at any time this can just blow up into an aggressive form. I think most people it goes without being said, but you, you definitely want to treat somebody that you know with cancer uh, the best way possible and be supportive because they're going to be out of their mind between the chemo and you know, all the stuff I went through, I was, I was a mess, you know, like I'm, I'm you're saying things you don't mm -hmm. mean, you're aggressive, you're agitated, you know, so it takes a real strong person to be a support group, support staff for you. Um, but you got to like, so if you're dealing with somebody with cancer, just understand they don't mean what they say half the time if it's negative. For sure. Um, and they're not trying to hurt you or, 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 or do anything to cause arguments or anything, but you're going to have to take some losses um, to help them be strong and stay strong so that, that stress doesn't get shifted from the fight 
to fighting you for no yeah. reason, you know, like, so yeah, I definitely think that, that, um, yeah, I think it goes without being said mo for, for the most part, but yeah, if you have an option, be overly kind, overly loving, be patient, overly generous, overly patient and help that person as much as they can. Cause yeah. understand unless you've been there and unless you've yeah. had cancer, just understand it's rough, it's hard, and, and it's stressful, and, and, and you need to, to, to make it as easy as possible for that person. Yeah, yeah, I totally respect that, and uh, I'm glad you were honest about that. You know, like, as someone who has dealt with cancer, like, it does put you in a bad mood. Yeah. And would you say for the people that do support you, would it be better for them to be, like, careful around you, or do you prefer, prefer them, to, like, I know this is very specific, but, like, you know, like when my friends are sick, like when you were sick, I didn't want to feel like, I didn't want you to feel like I pitied you or right. anything like that. I still teased you, you know, I still treated you like exactly the same. So like patient and understanding, but like still not act like like weird, like something's wrong, you know what I mean, right? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I think hopefully they're understanding what I'm saying here and, and, and doing research and know what they need to do. And you just got to trust that they know what they're doing. Yeah. And unless they, I would say, unless they ask or unless they look like they need some help or some assistance, let them just be yeah, just and support normal. whatever they're doing. I mean, how many times do we talk about cancer throughout the entire time before, during, and after like on a, the boat? Um, a few times, Not you know, much, like though. you would just tell me that, you know, you're smashing. I'm like, fuck yeah. But it know? wasn't and like then, too much, right? We, we, yeah, we, weren't, yeah. we weren't like harping on it. And it wasn't like pity me. It wasn't yeah. like, you know, this kind of stuff. So I, You were using it as an excuse I to be better cancer, than though. us because everything we well, did, if, if you did it. Yeah, I was <laughs> like, and I did that beat <laughs> you with cancer. <laughs> exactly. That's all you ever did. Yeah, I'm like, an asshole. And I got cancers, bitch. So yeah. you're like, you ain't got shit. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Cool, man. So... A bit of a tough question, but, like, what would you say if you could uh, think back? Why did an 85 underwater single breath fucking dive, swim, dude? That was dude, that good, was, dude, with that was, cancer, bro. That was early days. That was, like, before any treatment. With cancer, bro. Dude, that's, like, a story. Like, 81 meters underwater, one breath. Yeah, well, not depth. So for anyone listening, no, eighty-one it's, meters yeah, distance. So distance. that's like two hundred and forty feet. I did with one after, breath after like two or three days of diving yeah. ever, yeah. which is crazy. Yeah, but yeah, but, the this kind of but the question I wanted to ask you was like, you're really strong and like your outlook was amazing. But did you have any mo like what was your lowest moment if you had to choose one throughout the whole experience? Ah, uh, man. You know, because it was, it was a progression of, I mean, the pain, it got better throughout the whole time because I never, I never slowed down. I mm -hmm. never backed down. So it never got worse. It just kept getting better. So the diagnosis then? I mean, I'm saying like the diagnosis, man. The diagnosis from going, and this is why I think everybody needs to be very fucking careful because like one thing I definitely understood from this entire experience is there's a lot of people with cancer yeah. and they don't know. Really? Cancer is a slow growing thing. I didn't know. Damn. And I had four stage leukemia. And if I didn't get that Johnson & Johnson vaccine, who the hell knows when I would have found out and how much more cancer I would have had. And it might have yeah. been no matter how much I fasted, it wouldn't have helped. And there I would have been there just were, dead. There were just no like, other symptoms. Uh, rest in peace, John, uh, Rumble Johnson. He, you know, he, 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 he didn't, you know, he had obviously had too much cancer for the chemo. So, like, I would say be careful and, and get tested, you know, once you get to your 40s and I'd say a PET scan here and there is not going to hurt just to make sure. For sure. Because the earlier you catch it, the better. So th but like the diagnosis was the worst. To answer your question, the diagnosis was the worst because when you're a healthy person like me, I have no cancer in my family. I've never done – I've never been, like, into drugs and all that stuff my whole life before, you know, like, before 40. I didn't do – I've done more as far as drinking and, and, and unhealthy lifestyles since 40, 41-ish than I have my whole life. It's been fighting, training since I was eight years old. So, I mean, it was 100% healthy, not even fast food, not even carbonated yeah. drinks. So I, to come from a completely healthy lifestyle um, and not have cancer in my family, to be sitting in a, in a doctor's office and the doctor, you know, th they're very cold too, you know, they're, they're not yeah, like, they don't they're really not super sympathetic, emotion. you know. Yeah. And then they just look across and tell you you have four stages of leukemia and we need to get you in there fast and 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 you know this, this is the coldness of it and like before i could really digest it and start forming my game plan and getting getting myself psyched up and getting into the fight that moment i think was the was the worst right 
and and then throughout it, it was it was from the worst to slowly getting better as i kept getting better myself but it still hung over your head you know because you never know what's going to happen man I mean, when you got cancer especially with the johnson and johnson which so that's what scared me the most was the mix of the two like that johnson and johnson vaccine which it did already did something with the cancer because it let me know i had it so it already had some effect of the cancer and that turned out to be somewhat i guess good if it didn't cause it but it can't possibly i don't think cause lymphoma so fast you know like in a, a 24 period so it, it could very likely have something negative too in the long run so i think there's that fear of like what if something happens where you know even at my strongest fight i can't battle against this new drug that they made me take just to be able yeah, to see my family and so that always lingered above too and it's still to this day it is a worry you know because i could still it could still come back and, it, and this johnson johnson vaccine could still do something but i don't sit and stress about things like this you know i, I try to just stay positive and and move forward and keep my my life busy so yeah that's sick man so yeah so you got the diagnosis and it, it that was the lowest moment for you not the pain not like the losing weight that happened after it was just like knowing so for you i think that's quite unique i think a lot of people might struggle more with the physical discomfort that would come later well the, the, well there was the diagnosis stress right so i knew mm -hmm. i had the fight but then i had to make a decision and i don't just listen to doctors or just listen to people who's done it that aren't me and have my body type and have my age whatever mm -hmm. i have to formulate my own kind of game plan and strategy what i'm going to do so there was the 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 stress of getting diagnosed with stage four leukemia that was had to get over then there was the stress of my choice i had to make to follow and if that choice was wrong i'm going to be dead so then Damn. there was the, the stress of that so the whole time i'm putting myself through that starvation and the fasting um and you know Th that whole thing, that process and the chemo and then the vegetarian diet and, and going that route, I, I guess before the chemo started, fasting that two weeks was the biggest risk that I ever took in my life because had that been too much for me to handle the chemo, that could have fucked everything up and, and either caused me to not be able to do chemo enough to kill the cancer because I needed to recover the body uh, get that 50 pounds back which is not going to be easy mm. um which would have prevented me from doing a lot of chemo which would have also made the cancer grow a lot more right and harder fight um or you know it could have worked how i hoped it did and it did and it and it and it would have won the battle and won it at a pretty damn record pace you know so that stress was there as well like the stress on me to make that decision when I've had all these people in my head, you know, everybody's an expert. Everybody's telling me, the doctor's telling me this and the holistic people's telling me this. And then my friend who works as a, in this medical you know, field is telling me this. And so everything, everyone's got different, different advice. Things. Yeah. And you know me, I'm just the guy that does everything different than everyone else. So it's like, I don't, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the guy that listens to people anyway. I, I, I'm the, <laughs> yeah, I'm, the, I'm, sure. I'm the guy that, <laughs> I'm the guy that makes my decisions based on some kind of factual shit that I see. Yeah. I'm not going to believe what you tell me because you tell me or, or do what you say because you have a, a, a master's degree in something else or you're a, you know, you know, just because you're a cop or a president or, a, or whatever you may be. You're not an expert at everything. So for me, it's like I got to believe what I do. And, and that's what makes me do it so hard and stand by it so much is because I'm not relying on somebody else's guess or – or their their work i'm relying on what i came up with so it was it was stressful that you know till i got into the chemo and started seeing the results and it started being positive it was real stressful that i may have you know hopefully i made the right decision and i didn't the doctor's not right and i'm, I'm pushing myself too hard and too far and it's going to end up ultimately killing me well and then i'm going to die at 150 pounds which is worse than dying at 200 pounds <laughs> So that'd be the worst way. Close casket. Close casket. Definitely close casket. That would have been the worst thing ever is dying so small and skinny. But yeah, man, I mean, like being around you, like I really admire and respect how you do think for yourself and you do things your way, not necessarily conventional, only conventional if you think that's the best way to go forward, which actually leads me to ask, like, what are those on the table? Yeah, man. I had to put these out here, dude. I'm so proud of these. Um, speaking of, man, we didn't set this up at all, by the way, but this this, this just rolls right into what we were talking about, about being different. Um, you know, a Texas kid with no Muay Thai fights 
coming to Thailand, you know, the land of Muay Thai that invented Muay Thai and has the most Muay Thai gyms per capita, to think that he could possibly come here and, and, and help, you know, build a team and a family like we'd like this that, that would build ultimately what got voted as the, the, the best Muay Thai school in all of Thailand by Thailand for three straight years in a row yeah, is, is one of those things where, like, you can't do that by following everybody else. You have to think different, and you have to believe in yourself, and you have to to, to, to have that, what you just said, you know, like, to, to be able to even attempt something that crazy and that ludicrous and that just... Uh, what seems to be impossible, but we did it, and um, I'm I'm so proud of each and every one of these trophies. So these are these are trophies given for best Muay Thai gym in the this, country. This is, is that the best, correct? Yeah, yeah. It, it translates to the best Muay Thai school in Thailand. Yeah, and, and awesome. Um, it, this is for one of them is for 2021, one's for 2022, and we just got one. Uh, just the other day for 2023. So for three straight years, AK Thailand has been the best Muay Thai school in Thailand. Sick. Voted by Thailand, which is the most important. Because you always see like movies and stuff like that. It's like the best movie of the year voted by John Smith from the x Squad, right, You know, something like yeah. that. This is voted by Thailand, so baby. You who, know, Thailand voted this gym the best. So who in Thailand? So like wh- the government. which government, the governing, oh, damn. The All only right. one that judges what's the best school. Wow, that's <laughs> crazy, dude. The best Muay Thai school. Yeah, man, congrats. Like, I mean, Angela went to the ceremony, and it was a big ceremony in Bangkok, and she got the award and everything. It was just really cool, man, really cool. Angela's my gym manager and fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, that is crazy because um, honestly, like, I, uh, I before I knew you, like, I had moved to Phuket, and, like, I just see AKA shirts everywhere, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, this is, like, the amount of shirts, like, any part of this – island which is also a province on its own that you go to yeah yeah. you just see aka everywhere like everyone's repping it like you really built this place up and what's interesting is you did it in a part of phuket which is not like you know there's that other street where like all All the the muay thai gyms are just like crammed in there but you just have your own thing and you have it with I, I do enjoy it more because i i whenever i go on that street like it's cool and it's nice that everyone's together but there's this kind of like mm, it doesn't feel that chilled out to me like it feels like everybody's kind of like super it, competitive and not a way that i like you know but, but, I mean? but the, the atmosphere is the same as any other place in the world so this is the whole thing about thinking differently and believing in what there was no reason why this should work right so i knew that i wanted to build the gym to be uh a true thailand gym and i've been training here for 20 years and all the gyms i trained at were like where you were over there t- on that road and it's just like gyms that look like any other gym in any other country in the world. Why would you come to Thailand and train at a gym that's next to a road with cars going by with all the exhaust blowing into your face and restaurants and yeah, girl bars dude. and restaurants? It's oh, such oh, a oh, mix. So twice. But, uh, <laughs> you know, the uh, g- other gyms and, and, and gear shops and all that. Uh, so I wanted to build a gym in the jungle. I wanted it to be a real Thailand gym, like yeah. Kickboxer One, you know, like like full on, like all you see is jungle. So when you get to the Muay Thai area of AK Thailand, you can't even see the parking lot. All you can see is this jungle we built. I mean, we started out with five trees and dirt, and we brought in all this, um, all this foliage and all this, all this landscaping and so all this sick, jungle. Dude. And then we got the mountainside here, the ocean view on the other side, mm-hmm. and it's it's like really Thailand. But it was a huge risk when I found this property because. Um, there was no electricity, there was no water, there wasn't even a road to come back here. It was just a, a, a dirt moped road. Really? Yeah. When we, did, you when couldn't even they, drive a car hardly back here. When did they pave it? We paved it. And, you or, paved well, well, it? The, 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 we had the city pave it because of our gym, but we had to, we had to do the, the uh, gutters on the side to make the road wider so we can have it to where we can pass. Um, I put the transformer out here, um, to, which helped power the whole village. Um, we created Damn. tons of opportunity for the whole village. Um, then we got our, we had to dig wells for the water. And one of them, they, they hand dug and it took like a month. It was unbelievable how deep they dug and they were down there. <laughs> you look down, you couldn't even see them. Like they were Damn. so far down there, but we had to dig multiple wells. And like, it was, it was one of those things where it was an impossible dream to most people. When I started failed twice, third time was this piece of property in this land. Um, and I just used everything I learned from the two failures to, to make this one the best. But um, it was also once we got here and I picked this land, this had to be the land. But how we were going to get people to come here 
and how we would ever have this and and have as right. many people come here and all these people book before they come to Thailand. These aren't people that are in Thailand that just stumble across our gym. These people book months in advance and they fly all the way to Thailand. This ain't people that come like down the road, the right. local gym. They just drive they on you. their way home from work and stop at the gym. These are people that stop their lives and they they fly to Thailand to come train at this gym. That's what it means to them, and that's what it means to me because. It, I mean, that, that, that's like humbling and, and, and just I'm so proud to have a business where I can help achieve so much success and so many people, not only my staff, you know, we have 47 people on site, but also the, the family atmosphere that we have as guests that are just so thrilled. All of our stories on Instagram are just from our guests. We don't even we don't say we're the good a good gym or the best gym or or what uh, features we li- uh, are the best or what's good or what's not. We let the guests do the talking and we just repost the stories and it's just so gratifying that that like all this hard work uh, came to this and it did work out. But this is a great example of like thinking differently and like doing something because you believe in it versus what everyone else is doing because everyone else built fight gyms. And they all built fight gyms for fighters. This is the first gym in the world that was ever built that was a fight gym for everyone. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It's the Disneyland of fighting. I was after I saw Fight Club, I said I want to build a gym just like what they need for Fight Club. I don't want people fighting in underground parking lots and parking structures, but I want to build a gym where it's safer and it's a controlled environment, but where people can come that aren't fighters, but they can fight. And they can they can at their own level and their own pace with with fellow businessmen, fellow workers, fellow influencers, fellow celebrities. Obviously, we have tons of celebrities that come through. Yeah, you do. Uh, we had a, the sh- the prince from Dubai come, and no he, way he didn't even tell anyone. Javier called me up and was like, "Man, thanks for taking care of the prince. Man, he's just nonstop talking about AK time. I'm like, Sick. "What are you talking about?" He's like, yeah, he was there with, 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 with his friends and they were incognito. And like, so people were punching the prince out here and he was punching other people. And like, you couldn't even see this man in, in Dubai, you know, like, or near, near shake his hand or meet him. But he was out here punching, you know, and, and getting punched and going through the Muay Thai and learning and had the time of his life. I'm sure everybody he appreciated has that it too, you know, to like be a little bit more on the ground, like, you know, rather than like, I'm sure in his life back there is probably a little everybody bit more. Does. Everybody wants to, to be that, you know, yeah. especially people that don't have jobs or as alpha or as savage but they feel like they really are kind of deep down. Yeah. They want to come here. And we have a group in right now with this Milwaukee group and the whole group of a lot of companies are coming in now. We're doing a lot of company corporate stuff and the Sick. whole companies are coming in and they're just loving it, man. They're just, and these are just all your coworkers are out here in one Muay Thai class and they're just grappling or, or clinching each other and punching each other and sparring. It's, it's Dude, incredible. It's dope. Like I've, uh, you know, I like to work out. I train a lot like on my own, but I don't have much fighting experience. And I've like the, I've started coming. First of all, like I train hard, but I get my ass kicked here like crazy, like physically, not like Come in the MMA class because I'm taking that back over now. Are you? Okay. Yo, I, got, I, I will have for to. You. I'll have no, to give kidding. it a go. Maybe maybe uh, give my tendonitis <laughs> uh, a little bit longer before I uh, before I get my ass kicked. But man, the first thing I wanted to say is like I'm so shocked at how good of a workout it was, despite like always working out on my own and pushing myself. And secondly, like I was like a little bit apprehensive about going to a uh, Muay Thai class because I've never actually taken any sure. kind of fighting class. Sure, sure. And, like, after the first one, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'm going to go all the time. And I just felt, like, super chill, super comfortable, and without any fighting experience or any background in that whatsoever in any discipline, I was like, I'm, I'm really comfortable to just keep coming back here. And I could see, like, right away what road and where I would need to go to progress if I were to come back next time. So I really appreciate that about your gym. It's dope, man. And, like, the environment, just, like, the layout, the fact that, like, it's just surrounded by the jungle. It feels good to be here. And, like, like I said, like, on that main fighting street where everyone's at, it's cool, and I'm not knocking it, but it's just not really for me. I just feel like it's a And bit, there's some people it's that's for, you know. And there's and plenty of fighters over there, and that's their mentality, and, this, uh, you know. That that's what they are. They're fighters, and they want that sort of that, that atmosphere. But that's cool. I, yeah, I, that's I have cool. my I, I carved my own path, and, and to me, the there was a bigger demographic for people who watched fighting, 
and who were fans of fighting than actual fighters. True. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I want to yeah. be the Apple. You yeah. know what I mean? I want to have. All, I want to have the all. I'm gonna. When people look at our Instagram views, I want every single one of those views to be able to come here and train. Not not have to have someone who uh, is a fighter and doesn't have a gym and needs a trainer and can yeah. come to Thailand and can afford to pay for Thailand and will be able to pay and not complain and and we won't have to babysit them. So you know we do have the best fight team and and, and I'm in the MMA class now starting this week every single day. All the group classes, taking it back over, building up the MMA program myself. So you can come train with me every single day uh, of the week at 4 p.m. Um, but, uh, yeah, I wanted it to be open for everyone. And I wanted every single level from, I mean, your pregnant woman, to, you know, to, a, to an overweight uh, person trying to lose weight, uh, to, to an athlete who's, who's very strong and very athletic but not, you know, in, any kind of fight experience. Uh, influencers having fun celebrities were making look good OT Genesis and Central C came in here for yeah, a month Dan, Dan comes Central all the time you know obviously Damien Hurst was here you know one of the most famous painters of all time all the UFC fighters have been through here and 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 we've had so many uh, huge stars. Dana Dana came in here for eleven days. You know when I, when I was oh really he, Dana White he came here and did our commercial and damn he was here for eleven days and 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 was, yeah it was fantastic. So it, it just became like a hotbed. And Nelt Boys were just here recently and they did a good video with, uh, on YouTube and stuff and. Yeah, it's, it's been great, oh, man. Yeah. So, who uh, would you say Dana White and Dan Blazarian? Would that be the two biggest uh, names Damian coming Hurst, through? Damian, Damian Hurst. White. The, right now, the biggest star, Central C. I mean, he's he's True. He, he just got blown up huge. True, he is. Uh, he's a How big. How can I be homophobic? <laughs> <laughs> my, my, you know. my bitch is gay. Yeah, there you go. All right. I know everybody wants to go to Thailand because Thailand's so cool, but you can't come to Thailand without coming to AKA Thailand. Come on. turned out to be uh, what we want and we're, we're going even bigger now we're doing a lot more stuff and uh, we're online platform now so we're, we're doing online uh, the live app. live broadcast we have an app in the app store the Google Play Store mm -hmm. we have hundreds of techniques by our world champion trainers in the Muay Thai area we shot all yeah. through the pandemic I was making everybody work uh, I didn't know what I was going to do with all this stuff but I, I was making everybody work and I promised I wouldn't lay anybody off I paid all salaries I paid all you know uh, everybody to be here um, who could stay and we could we could uh, have work um, and we had all this content and we continued through and then we, we formed our own app and we got tons of uh, tips advice uh, techniques now we have community we have live broadcasts every week uh, we're going to start having multiple broadcasts all throughout the week from all the different stadiums where you can watch live Muay Thai action yeah. all the time but yeah you, the commercial will play here and you'll be able to see about AK Thailand But I want to talk about uh, you for just a second real fast before we go. Um, your work is fantastic, man. When I met you through Dan, Dan had you out there because um, I've been with Dan for years, come back and forth coming here, and then he started getting into free diving with you. Yeah. Then I came out with him and, and met you, and we started free diving, which is, man, my passion, my new thing. You know, I love being that, the freedom of being underwater and just free diving and not having oxygen, not having anything but just you and nature and all these – Puffer fish that I'm grabbing and you're screaming at me for. <laughs> Do not. I dude, didn't know they no, were poisonous. Shit. I didn't yeah, know they were poisonous, I got to keep you on a leash under the water You've only rescued me man. like two or three times. Come on, dude. Yeah, so yeah, that's one thing worth mentioning is you have a, uh, yeah, thanks so much for that. You know, I really appreciate you You're the you best, bro. You're the, you're the best trifecta. You're the best 
uh, master master uh, freediver photographer and artist in the world uh, and that's not even arguable um, that is hands down as you can see right here um, you are absolutely a master and and we're gonna watch you blow up and, and continue to grow as you are and it's fantastic to be your friend and, and to be able to go diving with you and, and just to have that privilege and what you've taught me and what I've listened and what I've not listened to you and learned from yeah, <laughs> very right? quickly because Thanks, bro, you man. saved my life <laughs> multiple times, but go ahead. Sorry. Damn. I really like really appreciate it. Thanks so much. And, but yeah, I mean like it's, um, it's just something like that took me a really long time to figure out is what makes me happy. But I think that's the only reason I can do it to the level that I do it. Um, like to that caliber It's just because it's just what I really enjoy. And watching you dive, like, uh, of course, in the beginning, like... <laughs> that first cave was interesting. Dude, that first cave. Can I talk about that? Like, yeah. Like, can I just, got, like, yeah, say it? In, like, uh, if people don't want to hear, they can think. So, like, for anybody listening, um, the first time I met Mike... Uh, like the highlight story <laughs> of our life, for some reason, for y'all's life. Dude, you were like... So, I met you, and that day we went out to a place called Doc Mai, which is, yeah. means, like, Flower Island. Uh, and it had some cool ass caves and like Dan had done that cave before and um, he said to keep you away from it. But this is Dan's <laughs> problem, man. When Dan, Dan knows me better enough to know. When he started, he overly said, keep me away from it. That's telling me like, you're a pussy Reverse if you don't go into that cave, this, man. Dude. So yeah, we got to whisper stuff like, well, yeah, so he kept you. saying, don't let Swick near this cave. Don't let him try this cave. And to me, I'm like, oh, I ain't no bitch. I'm going to go do this cave. Well, like, yo, I have, I, I like definitely no doubt you can do that. It's just like that one little thing about your ears, like having to be cleared. Right. So like, oh, the blood and all that. Yeah. Well, I don't think you did. You bleed out. Yeah. Your ears? When I, I got up from the cave, cause I didn't know it was 30 me or 10 meters down on the other end. Damn. That's the problem. I didn't know the cave went so. down. This does not reflect my teaching. No, 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 no. <laughs> you were in front of me. So. Yeah, you, yeah. You told me not to go. I told Dan you told not me to not go. to go. We were the only then, three of us. <laughs> Y'all were gone. I had nobody, and I was just like, <laughs> "Fuck, I, I'll just follow them." And then you just <laughs> went anyways. And then your girl is trying to go down, and then she's like, "Babe, my ears hurt." And you're like, "Babe, like, there's no <laughs> way your ears hurt as much as mine. Just do it." And I was like, "Oh my god, like, guys, this it's is not how you free dive." We've we've made some progress since then, but I know you can go much deeper if you really feel like it. So when the high season's over and we get more time to go out on our own, let's, no, you've uh, taught let's me so your, much, man. It, yeah. it doesn't reflect on the beginning because you know, obviously. Yeah, no, but that was hilarious, and like. But we've had some fun. Those, those are fun moments, but dude. it doesn't reflect on your teaching. But you've taught me so much, <laughs> and you're going to teach me continuously more. But, um, man, you've definitely saved me and helped me, and and, uh, and I cherish your friendship and, and your 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 help in that regard. And I want to learn more and more and more. But yeah, those first those first few times were definitely some good memories. But yeah, it doesn't reflect on your de- oh, <laughs> teaching. No, man, it's, it's my pleasure. It's it's been my pleasure. And uh, looking forward to shooting with you again. We need to go to PP. I don't think you and I have been to PP. Like, we've been with Dan, but we go end of the day, and sometimes it's, like, a little bit darker. There's some earlier. Oh, no. We went, right? But then the waves were too big for that really yeah. cool cave that I well, went I went in there. You. you went in there. I was the only one that went in there. fucking crazy, dude. I can't Everybody's believe Everybody's like, dude, that that, there's the cave right there. And I went all the way out there to go to that cave. Dude, Nobody went in there. the waves were huge. You were like Dude, it was a like blender, a washing man. machine in there. I couldn't get out. Oh, man. I, I thought I was going to drown. I couldn't. I literally couldn't get out. I had to go under the water and then back out. And I remember y'all were on the boat. And y'all, y'all were like, okay, everyone's on the boat. I didn't even jump in. Somebody's in the cave. <laughs> and you were like, it was on film. And you were like, ah, it's <laughs> I was like, god damn, of course it is. You know, Dan Dan always says about stuck, you. I was stuck, dude. You, he always says you got one gear, and it's true. You just, like, jump off the boat, and you're right into it. But, yeah, I was there three days ago, and the weather's changed, so now it. it's, like, totally I want to see it when acceptable. I'm not getting thrown from Dude. side to side and sliced up by the freaking That spot is reef. insane, man. Like, yeah, we need to go back. You need to see this. Either we do, like, a day trip there on, on a speedboat, or we just, like, go there for a few days and go chill and dive and just be more mellow about it either way we definitely got to do it dude and it's uh 
it's such a cool island when the season is right. And Kotal too. I want, I I want to hit that shipwreck too. Dude, the new shipwreck's insane. And we're bringing yeah. this up and we're talking about this. We're flowing into this conversation because this is all about Phuket, guys. So, I mean, those of you who've opted out because you're here for the cancer, I understand. But for those of you listening for the podcast and, and uh, you know, my story and who I am and AK Thailand and, and Phuket and everything else. Phuket life, this is This is it, Phuket life, what you're hearing about, man. It, it is a paradise here. And you come here, you can train, you can go dive with Tony and... And there's nothing better than diving with Tony, man. I mean, honestly, <laughs> like it's really is it, it we I've never laughed and had such a good time. Even when I was having my close calls and you were rescuing me from my long my long breath holds. <laughs> Dude, I was like, yeah, I mean at when first you were very to, like, much mistaking that I was passing out when I really wasn't. I had a few more seconds left. Right. Right. <laughs> I hundred percent was gonna make that three <laughs> three a, minute mark. You know how many people I've seen black out and they wake up and they had no idea they even blacked out. They're just yeah. like, they just act normal. And then someone's like, you blacked out. And they're like, wait, wait, what? Yeah. I was blacked out and they had no idea. So 45, you couldn't give me 15 seconds more, man. Next time, next time. <laughs> and it, the, see, the thing is, the sport that you are a master of and the sport that I'm a master of, they are both extreme sports, but they vary in that one yes. you push through and one you have to relax. This is right? my biggest problem. And as a fighter, you can get really far in free diving by pushing, and which is also really great for fighting cancer. However, it's not going to get you as far as you could potentially go mm. if you if you adapt this very different style of thinking than any other sport. Sure. So Relaxing I think, a lot more, conserving energy and everything. Yeah. Conserving oxygen. Conserving oxygen and energy, they're all, they're kind of go hand in hand. Cool. So yeah, man. Um, but yeah, you're right. Like living in Phuket, there's a new shipwreck in Phuket now too. I saw it. Uh, which is super hungry. shallow. Yeah, dude, this is like accessible for most beginner divers now. So like on a day trip out, you can go to this shipwreck that has three stories. It's a giant ferry. You can swim inside and through it if you're ballsy enough, which I know just by saying you're already going to do. I'm going bro. But damn, man. So Phuket life's great, man. Then you can be back by the afternoon, go like hit up like a nice restaurant in Phuket town. Like uh, One way or another, we're going to get this worked out with Tony here. And when you come to train at AK time, we're going to start getting – some kind of group packages together to to get them to come out and, and have some dive experience uh maybe with you and your team and uh it'd be cool to even host like a workshop at aka where we do like we're getting dry. the pool we're yeah. getting the pool so we could maybe start doing some little stuff there so pool is one and first of all uh for first first things first is like people always hold their breath dry first before they cool. go in unless your name is mike swick yeah I know. and then you just go straight to like <laughs> the most insane shit ever but anyway so like doing a workshop for a dry breath hold or when the pool is built even doing it in the pool that'd sure. be super cool man yeah so yeah that'd be fun so i want to say thank you so much tony for coming on to my podcast um this is a very important one it's going to be one of the ones um probably of all time importance to me um th that i've detailed my one of my toughest journeys and uh my life-changing experiences and you were a part of that you were a part of this so I appreciate you coming and, uh, and, and interviewing me and, and, and letting all of the people that have been messaging me and, and that, that need this information and that I hope I help in some way or form, but I'm not giving advice to. Um, and, and we create some success for some people and save some lives and uh, at least, if nothing else, build some confidence and, and, and get people on the right the positive mindset of knowing that you can beat this shit, man. And don't give up and, and don't listen to people that are negative and, and don't necessarily listen to the doctors. Listen to yourself and, and do your research and, and save your life and be in control of your life. Yo, man. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, grateful to be your friend and to have your influence in my life. Seeing people fight like you do helps me also be the same way. You know, the people you surround yourself with, um, it plays such a big role and how you uh, view your life and how you live it. So, I mean, Thanks, proud of man. you, dude. Congrats on beating it. Congrats on being healthy, being strong again. And uh, hopefully you don't have to deal with that shit ever again. Thanks, bro. Let's go do that shipwreck. Yeah, dog. All right. All right. Take care, guys. Uh, tune in next time, and I will see you then.